All right, so we're going to take a deep dive into these cybersecurity news updates. Sounds good. You know, we've got a lot to cover. Yeah. Um, you know, I think you're really going to enjoy this, though, because I think, you know, the stuff we've got here is really interesting. Yeah, definitely. We're seeing everything from, you know, data breaches and AI gone rogue yeah. to the wild world of cybercrime. Mm-hmm. But we're going to connect the dots for you and see what it all really means. Yeah, that's the exciting part, right? Looking at the patterns and like trying to draw out insights that, you know, maybe aren't obvious when you're just looking at a single data point. Exactly. You kind of zoom out and yeah. look at the whole landscape. Yeah. And and speaking of not so obvious, you know, one of the first things that jumped out at me in, in these reports was this research from MXD. Okay. That's the National Center for Cybersecurity and Manufacturing. And it's all about how businesses view their own security. Interesting. And I think it reveals something kind of trolling, like this illusion of security. The majority of manufacturing firms they surveyed believe they have strong cybersecurity practices. Okay. But the reality is much different. Like they're kind of fooling themselves a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. The numbers paint a pretty stark picture. Yeah. Less than half of these firms have a dedicated cybersecurity leader. Wow. And even fewer have like a comprehensive cybersecurity policy in place. It's like building a house without a blueprint. Yeah. Or maybe <laughs> even a foundation. Right, exactly. So, You're just know. asking for trouble down the road. Yeah, and and that lack of preparation, it just leaves them extremely vulnerable. Yeah. Right to there. attack. Mm -hmm. And you know, it, it makes you wonder if this gap between perception and reality mm -hmm. exists in other industries, too. Oh, I'm sure it does. I mean, manufacturing is not unique in that sense. Right. I think a lot of organizations across different sectors probably overestimate their cybersecurity posture. Mm -hmm. But I think it's human nature to assume that things are OK until they're not. So it's a good reminder to kind of check yourself and, and really assess where you stand. Absolutely. Yeah. But um, let's shift gears for a minute and talk about the cloud, because, huh. you know, everybody's migrating their data these days. Right. But this tenable report we have suggests that it's not always a smooth or secure transition. Yeah. The cloud introduces its own set of challenges when it comes to security. Okay. And one of the biggest issues we see is cloud misconfigurations. Misconfiguration. Yeah. Essentially, it's when cloud services aren't set up correctly. Okay. And that can leave sensitive data exposed or create opportunities for unauthorized access. So like leaving the back door wide open. Exactly. And we're not talking about, you know, small scale oversights here. Yeah. The report found that a significant percentage of organizations have publicly exposed data, including sensitive information. Wow. They also found unused access keys with excessive permissions. Okay. So it's like giving someone a master key to your entire house right. when they only need access to the garden shed. Yeah, that's that's pretty terrifying. Yeah, it's a big problem, and it's something that organizations really need to be paying attention to. So for someone who's not a tech expert, what's the takeaway here? Well, the good news is that a, l a lot of these issues can be mitigated okay. with the right security measures. So it's essential to, you know carefully configure your cloud services, right. regularly review permissions, and use strong passwords. All right, so basic security hygiene, but applied to the cloud. Exactly. Okay, now let's talk about a case that I think illustrates some of these risks in a very personal way, and that's the situation with 23andQ. Oh, yeah, the DNA testing company. My God, what? What's going on with them? Well, they're facing some pretty serious financial challenges right now. Oh, really? Yeah. Their stock's about to be delisted from the NASDAQ. Wow. And there's been numerous board resignations. Okay. So it kind of raises this question of, you know, what might happen to the vast amounts of DNA data they've collected? That's a good point. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about some pretty sensitive information here. Right. Our genetic information. And their privacy policy does address a potential sale. Okay. But the language is a little bit vague. Oh, really? They talk about using the data to provide services. Right. But that doesn't really clarify what could happen under new ownership. So it's kind of a gray area. It is. Yeah. And it raises some, you know, unsettling possibilities. Yeah. Like, could our DNA data be used for research we didn't consent to? Right. Could it be shared with third parties? Right. It's definitely a cause for concern. And it makes you think, you know, maybe we need greater transparency. Yeah. Absolutely. From these companies that are handling such sensitive personal information. I think that's a key takeaway here. Yeah. And, you know, it reminds me of what happened with national public data. Oh, right. The background check company. Yeah. They suffered a massive data breach, losing billions of records. Billions. Billions. That's incredible. It's crazy. 
Wow. And, you know, it's a stark reminder that even if a company has good intentions, mm. they can still be vulnerable to these attacks. Absolutely. And in that case, the full extent of the damage is still unknown. Yeah. So it really highlights the importance of due diligence, mm -hmm. you know, being mindful of who you entrust your data to. Right. It's not enough to just protect your own devices and accounts. You need to be aware of the security practices right. of any third party companies you do business with. Exactly. It's all connected. Yeah. Keeping your systems safe is super important as businesses rely more and more on digital systems, and that's where turnkey cybersecurity can really help. Yeah, we're here to help small businesses just like yours make sure they're safe and sound in this crazy world of cybersecurity. And uh, we offer a whole suite of services specifically tailored for you. So that's ensuring CMMC compliance and doing penetration testing. We also run vulnerability scans, and we can help you develop a comprehensive risk assessment. And it doesn't stop there, right? No, it doesn't. We handle incident response, should the unfortunate happen, and we guide you through migrations like GCC. We just want to make sure your transitions are smooth and that you're secure. It's all about peace of mind, right? You focus on what you do best, running your business, and we'll make sure that your digital world is safe and sound. Let's move on to artificial intelligence. Okay. It's a game changer in so many ways. It is. But we're also starting to see the dark side of AI emerge. Oh. Especially in the realm of cybercrime. That's concerning. And one development that caught my eye was OpenAI's confirmation that hackers are using ChatGPT to write malware. Interesting. So they're actually using AI to create malicious code. Yeah. And security companies have been warning about this possibility for a while, but right. it's significant that OpenAI themselves have acknowledged it now. Yeah. I mean, it's one thing for security researchers to say it, but when the creators of the tool admit it, that carries a lot of weight. Right. So even they're recognizing that it can be used for malicious purposes. Mm -hmm. It's a double-edged sword. It is. What does this mean for the future of AI and cybersecurity? Well, it raises a whole host of questions. Right. Like how many undetected attacks are already out there using this chat GPT generated malware? Right. And as AI becomes even more sophisticated, you know, how do we stay ahead of the curve in terms of security? Yeah. It's a challenge for sure. Yeah. It's a challenge that requires constant vigilance Absolutely. and innovation. Mm -hmm. It seems like we're entering this new era of cybercrime where the lines between human and machine are blurring. Yeah, it's getting harder and harder to tell what's real and what's not. Right. And what's human and what's machine. And it's not just about malware. Yeah. You know, we're also seeing AI being used to create deep fakes. Oh, right. Which could have huge implications. Absolutely. For the upcoming elections. Yeah, the potential for disinformation is huge. And the case of Twitter's AI tool Grok creating deep fakes of politicians and even Elon Musk himself. I saw that. It's a prime example of how easily this technology can be misused. Right. It's like a digital Pandora's box. It is. Once it's open, it's yeah. hard to contain the consequences. Yeah. And the fact that there are very limited legal frameworks for dealing with deep fakes makes it even more challenging. We're in uncharted territory. We are. Which makes it all the more important to be aware of the risks absolutely and develop strategies mm. for detecting and combating these deep fakes yeah we need to be proactive we do this whole situation reminds me of the 2016 election and the controversy surrounding wikileaks oh yeah leaked information whether it's real or fabricated can be incredibly damaging absolutely and we're seeing parallels to that right now with the leaked trump campaign documents. right the source claims to have hacked the campaign right and there's speculation about potential foreign interference with iran as a possible suspect it's a messy situation for sure. And complex. And it has potential legal and political ramifications. Mm -hmm. But regardless of the source or the authenticity of the documents, it underscores the importance of critical thinking. Absolutely. And media literacy. Yeah. We need to be discerning consumers of information, yeah. verifying sources, considering biases, mm -hmm. before we form opinions or share information online. Absolutely. Now, let's talk about the real world costs of cybersecurity breaches, because it's not just about hypothetical threats. Right. These attacks have tangible financial and reputational consequences. Yeah, absolutely. In the case of Marriott paying a $52 million settlement for a gate breach that happened back in 2018. Wow. It's a stark reminder of those consequences. $52 million. That's a lot of money. It is a lot of money. And it took them six years to reach that settlement. Six years? Yeah. Wow. And the amount they paid out, it's relatively small compared to the potential damage inflicted on their customers. Right. So it raises the question of how much value is really placed on individual data. 
Yeah. It's almost as if our personal information is treated as a commodity right. with a surprisingly low price tag. Yeah, it's a dangerous precedent for sure. It is. And, you know, data breaches can lead to identity theft, mm. financial ruin, right. a loss of trust. Yeah, it can take years to recover from something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And the case of Comcast Truist Bank and other companies that hired a debt collector who ended up suffering a major data breach okay. also highlights the risks associated with third-party vendors. Right. So it's like a chain reaction. One weak link can compromise the entire system. It can. Yeah. You can have the strongest cybersecurity defenses in the world. Right. But if you're sharing sensitive information with a company that doesn't have adequate security measures in place... You're still vulnerable. You're still vulnerable. Exactly. It's a reminder that cybersecurity is an interconnected ecosystem. It is. And everyone needs to play their part. Absolutely. It's about understanding that security is not just a technical issue. Right. It's a cultural one. It is. It requires awareness, vigilance, and collaboration at every level. And that brings us to the importance of fighting back against cybercrime and staying ahead of the curve in this constantly evolving threat landscape. Yeah, so what are some of the strategies and initiatives that are showing promise in combating these threats? Are there any glimmers of hope amidst all this doom and gloom? I think there are reasons to be optimistic. For example, Interpol recently recovered over $40 million from a business email compromise attack. $40 million, that's incredible. How did they manage that? It was a textbook case of rapid response and international cooperation. Oh, wow. So they were able to track the funds and coordinate with authorities across border. Exactly. They were able to quickly track the funds as they moved through various accounts and coordinate with authorities in multiple countries to freeze the assets and ultimately recover the money. That's amazing. It's great to see that kind of international cooperation paying off. It really is a huge win, and it shows that law enforcement can be effective in combating cybercrime, especially when they act swiftly and collaboratively. Absolutely. And it's a testament to the importance of reporting these incidents promptly. The faster the authorities are notified, the better their chances of recovering stolen funds and bringing the perpetrators to justice. Right. And it's not just about reacting to attacks. There are also initiatives focused on prevention and awareness. Mm. You mentioned earlier the White House's efforts to harmonize cyber rules across government agencies. What's the thinking behind that? Well, it's all about streamlining and strengthening cybersecurity practices across the board. Right now, different agencies might have different security standards, which can create inconsistencies and vulnerabilities. By harmonizing these rules, they're aiming for a more unified and robust approach to cybersecurity. It makes sense a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. Right, exactly. And this principle applies to individuals and businesses as well. You might have strong security measures in place, but if your employees aren't trained on things like phishing scams or password hygiene, you're still at risk. So it's about creating a culture of security awareness where everyone understands the importance of protecting data and is empowered to report suspicious activity. Absolutely. And it doesn't have to be complicated. Something as simple as using strong, unique passwords for all your accounts can make a huge difference. Think of it like locking your doors and windows. It's basic security hygiene. We've talked a lot about the threats posed by AI, but it's important to remember that it can also be a powerful tool for good in the cybersecurity realm. That's right. AI can be used to analyze vast amounts of data, identify patterns, and detect anomalies that might indicate a cyber attack. It can also help automate security tasks and free up human analysts to focus on more complex threats. So it's about finding the right balance, harnessing the power of AI for security while also being mindful of its potential for misuse. And that requires ongoing dialogue, collaboration, and ethical considerations. We need to be having conversations about how to develop and deploy AI responsibly with safeguards in place to prevent harm. Speaking of taking action, one thing that impressed me in these news updates was seeing examples of individuals and organizations pushing back against companies that aren't prioritizing security or privacy. Oh, absolutely. We saw how the EU put pressure on TikTok to change its rewards program because it was considered manipulative. And Ireland is taking Twitter to court over its data harvesting practices for AI training. It's inspiring to see that we're not just powerless bystanders in the digital landscape. We can use our voices, our wallets, and our data to demand better practices and greater accountability. Consumers are becoming increasingly aware of their rights and the value of their data, and I think we'll see even more of this kind of activism in the future. It's a powerful reminder that we have a say in shaping the digital world. It's about reclaiming our agency and demanding that technology serves us 
rather than the other way around. Exactly. And resources like these security news updates play a crucial role in empowering individuals to make informed decisions. They provide a window into the complex world of cybersecurity, helping us understand the threats, the trends, and the potential solutions. So if you're feeling overwhelmed by all this information, don't despair. Remember, knowledge is power. The more you understand about cybersecurity, the better equipped you'll be to protect yourself, your business, and your data. And don't be afraid to reach out for help. There are countless resources available online, and there are also organizations like the National Cybersecurity Alliance and the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, CISA, that offer guidance and support. It's like anything else. Sometimes you need expert advice to navigate complex challenges. Now let's get a little more practical. What are some specific actions that individuals and businesses can take to improve their cybersecurity posture? One of the most important things is to have a plan. Don't wait until you're facing a crisis to start thinking about cybersecurity. Develop a comprehensive strategy that includes things like... Okay, so plan. Got it. What else? You'll want to think about vulnerability management regularly scanning your systems and software for weaknesses that could be exploited by attackers. Makes sense. It's like checking for cracks in the foundation of your house. Exactly. And don't forget incident response protocols. If an attack does occur, you need to know what to do, who to contact, and how to contain the damage. It's all about being prepared just in case the worst happens. Anything else we should be thinking about? Absolutely. Perhaps the most crucial element, employee training. Your employees are often the first line of defense, so it's essential to train them on how to recognize and avoid phishing scams, use strong passwords, and report suspicious activity. It's about creating a culture of security awareness where everyone understands that they have a role to play in protecting the organization's data. And don't forget about strong policies and procedures to govern data access, usage, and storage. So we're talking about a layered approach to security, where technology policies and human awareness all work together to create a more resilient defense. Precisely. And if you're not sure where to start, or if you need help implementing specific security measures, don't hesitate to seek professional guidance. It's like anything else. Sometimes you need to call in the experts to get the job done right. But even with expert help, it's important to remember that cybersecurity is an ongoing process, right? Absolutely. The threat landscape is constantly evolving, so you need to stay informed, adapt your strategies, and be prepared to respond to new challenges. So it's not a one-time fix. It's a marathon, not a sprint. And it's a marathon that we're all running together. Collaboration is key in the fight against cybercrime. Sharing information, best practices, and resources can help us stay ahead of the bad guys and create a more secure digital world for everyone. We're all in this together, and our collective security depends on our willingness to work together, share knowledge, and support each other. Exactly. We can't afford to be complacent. We have to keep learning, keep adapting, and keep fighting for a more secure future. Well said. I think that's a great note to end on for this part of our deep dive. We've covered a lot of ground today, from the illusion of security in the manufacturing industry to the potential risks of cloud misconfigurations and the evolving threat of AI-powered cybercrime. Yeah, it's a lot to take in, but it's all incredibly important. It is, and I hope our listeners are feeling empowered to take action to protect themselves, their businesses, and their data. I hope so, too, because at the end of the day, cybersecurity is everyone's responsibility. That's right. We're all in this together. And by working together, sharing knowledge and supporting each other, we can create a more secure digital world for everyone. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to diving into some more specific examples and strategies in our next segment. Me too. Hmm. We've got some fascinating cases to discuss, and I think our listeners are going to find them both informative and thought-provoking. So stay tuned for part two of our deep dive into cybersecurity, where we'll explore how to fight back against these threats and stay ahead of the curve. Sounds good. I'm ready when you are. Oh, yeah. It's a fantastic example of how, like, coordinated action can actually make a difference. Hmm. It really is. And, you know, it's not just about reacting to these attacks. There are also initiatives focused on prevention and awareness. You mentioned earlier the White House's efforts to harmonize cyber rules across government agencies. Yeah. What's the thinking behind that? Well, you know, it's all about streamlining and strengthening cybersecurity practices across the board right now. You know, different agencies might have like different security standards and that can create inconsistencies and vulnerabilities. Yeah, that makes sense. So by, you know, harmonizing these rules, the goal is to have like a more unified approach. Right. A chain is only as strong as its weakest link. Exactly. And this principle applies to individuals and businesses as well. Right. You know, you might have really strong security measures in place, but if your employees aren't trained on things like, you know, 
phishing scams or password hygiene, you're still at risk. So it's really about creating that culture of security awareness mm -hmm. where everyone understands the importance of protecting data and, you know, is empowered to report any suspicious activity they see. Absolutely. And, you know, it doesn't have to be complicated. Something as simple as using strong, unique passwords for all your accounts can make a huge difference. Right. The basics. Yeah, basic security hygiene. We've talked a lot about the threats posed by AI, but, you know, it's important to remember that it can also be a powerful tool for good in the cybersecurity realm. Oh, for sure. AI can be used to analyze, like, massive amounts of data, identify patterns, and detect anomalies that might indicate a cyber attack. And it can also help automate certain security tasks and free up, you know, human analysts to focus on more complex threats. So it's about finding that right balance. Yeah, Harnessing the power of AI for security while also being mindful of its potential for misuse. Right. And that requires ongoing dialogue and collaboration and ethical considerations. You know, we need to be having conversations about how to develop and deploy AI responsibly with safeguards in place to prevent harm. Speaking of taking action, one thing that impressed me in these news updates was seeing examples of, you know, individuals and organizations pushing back against companies that aren't prioritizing security or privacy. Right. Oh, absolutely. We saw how the EU put pressure on TikTok to change its rewards program because it was considered manipulative. Right. And Ireland is taking Twitter to court over its data harvesting practices for AI training. Yeah, it's inspiring to see that, you know, we're not just powerless bystanders in this digital landscape. We're not. We can use our voices, our wallets, and our data to demand better practices and greater accountability. Yeah, consumers are becoming increasingly aware of their rights and the value of their data. And I think we'll see even more of this kind of activism in the future. You know, it's a powerful reminder that we have a say in shaping the digital world. It's about reclaiming our agency and demanding that technology serves us rather than the other way around. Exactly. And, you know, resources like these security news updates play a crucial role in empowering individuals to make informed decisions. They provide a window into, you know, this complex world of cybersecurity, helping us understand the threats, the trends, and the potential solutions. So if you're feeling overwhelmed by all this information, don't despair. Yeah. Remember, knowledge is power. The more you understand about cybersecurity, the better equipped you'll be to protect yourself, your business, and your data. And don't be afraid to reach out for help. There are countless resources available online, and there are also organizations like the National Cybersecurity Alliance and the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, CSEA, yeah. that offer guidance and support. It's like anything else. You know, sometimes you need expert advice to navigate these complex challenges. Now, let's get a little more practical. Yeah. What are some specific actions that, you know, individuals and businesses can take to improve their cybersecurity posture? Well, one of the most important things is to have a plan. Okay. Don't wait until you're facing a crisis to start thinking about cybersecurity. Develop a comprehensive strategy that includes things like... Okay, so a plan. Got it. What else? You'll want to think about vulnerability management, regularly scanning your systems and software for weaknesses that could be exploited by attackers. Makes sense. It's like checking for cracks in the foundation of your house. Yeah, exactly. And don't forget incident response protocols. If an attack does occur, you need to know what to do, who to contact, and how to contain the damage. It's all about being prepared, just in case the worst happens and anything else we should be thinking about. Absolutely. Perhaps the most crucial element, employee training. Your employees are often the first line of defense, so it's essential to train them on how to recognize and avoid phishing scams, use strong passwords, and report suspicious activity. It's about creating a culture of security awareness where everyone understands that they have a role to play in protecting the organization's data. And don't forget about strong policies and procedures to govern data access, usage, and storage. So we're talking about a layered approach to security, where technology policies and human awareness all work together to create a more resilient defense. Precisely. And if you're not sure where to start, or if you need help implementing specific security measures, don't hesitate to seek professional guidance. It's like anything else. Sometimes you need to call in the experts to get the job done right. But even with expert help, you know, it's important to remember that cybersecurity is an ongoing process, right? Absolutely. The threat landscape is constantly evolving, so you need to stay informed, adapt your strategies, and be prepared to respond to new challenges. So it's not a one-time fix. Yeah. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Yeah. And it's a marathon that we're all running together. Collaboration is key in the fight against cybercrime. 
Sharing information, best practices, and resources can help us stay ahead of the bad guys and create a more secure digital world for everyone. We're all in this together, and our collective security depends on our willingness to work together, mm -hmm. share knowledge, and support each other. It really is. It's about recognizing that you know, we all have a role to play, whether we're individuals protecting our personal data or organizations safeguarding sensitive information. Right. And it's not just about, you know, big companies or government agencies. Even small businesses and individuals can be targets. Oh, absolutely. You know, we've seen how vulnerable our everyday devices can be from smartphones and laptops to smart speakers and even VoIP phones. Mm -hmm. It's a reminder that security needs to be top of mind in every aspect of our digital lives. Yeah. It really does. And, you know, that brings us back to one of the key themes that's emerged, I think, throughout our deep dive, and that's the importance of proactive security. OK. It's not enough to just react to threats. Right. We need to anticipate them and take steps to mitigate those risks before they become problems. So being proactive means having a plan. Yes. Implementing strong security measures, mm -hmm. staying informed about the latest threats. Mm hmm and creating that culture of security awareness yeah. you know, within our homes and organizations. Absolutely. It's about being vigilant, but not paranoid informed without being overwhelmed. Right. And it's about understanding that cybersecurity is not a destination, it's a journey. Yeah. You know, the threat landscape is constantly evolving, so we need to be adaptable, always learning and always improving those defenses. You know, one of the most important takeaways for me from these news updates is the power of collective action. You know, we saw how the EU pressured TikTok to change its practices right. and how Ireland is holding Twitter accountable mm -hmm. for its data harvesting, it shows that, you know, we're not powerless we're not against these tech giants. Absolutely. Those are great examples of how, you know, individuals and organizations can work together to demand better security and privacy practices from the companies that we interact with. Right. And as consumers become more aware of their rights and the value of their data, mm -hmm. I think we're going to see even more of this type of activism. I think so, too. It's a powerful reminder that we have a say in shaping the digital world. It's about using our voices, yeah. our choices, and our collective power to shape a digital world that is you know, more secure, ethical, and equitable for mm. everyone. I love that. And, you know, as we wrap up this deep dive, is there one final thought or question that you'd like to leave our listener with? Ooh, that's a good one. Something to ponder. You know, as they navigate the complexities of the digital world? Well, you know, if we live in a world where even artificial intelligence can be weaponized and basic security practices are still being overlooked by so many, what, what does this say about the future of our data and our privacy? It's a powerful question. It is. And it really underscores the stakes of cybersecurity. You know, in the 21st century, mm -hmm. it's not just about protecting our devices and our data. Right. It's about safeguarding our privacy, yeah. our freedoms, and our future. Our future. Yeah. That's a good point. So to our listener, we ask, what surprised you the most in this deep dive? Yeah. What actions will you take to enhance your own cybersecurity? And how will you contribute to creating a more secure and trustworthy digital world for everyone? Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. We'll see you next time.